Why would you ever want to transcode a video file? That does not make sense. That's the dumbest thing I have ever heard. I mean, you have an amazing quality video, you want to share said video with a friend or family member, and then you want to transcode it? That's ridiculous! Why would you ever want to do something so insane? There's people out there like that. What's up YouTube, Jason here with By My Bits, and in today's video, I wanna talk about why would you ever want to transcode video files with your Plex media server? Yes, this is part of a Plex monthly sponsored video. If you'd like to sign up for a free Plex account or buy a Plex pass, please use my links in the description down below. Some people out there, and this might even be you, believe that if you can't play a video file directly, then you shouldn't play a video file at all. And I always like to think, you know, live and let live. If you have a different view on life, that's fine, but, don't force it on other people. Don't hammer your belief system into somebody else. Just because they don't wanna see the acne on an actor's face, they would like to see a blurry mess of a blob, a video file, rather than clarity. Don't judge them. Okay, let's back up for a second. Transcoding is actually a very useful feature built into Plex, and tons of people use it automatically without even knowing. But with all jokes aside, there are people that stand by, whether it's just a random flex on their part, or they really just wanna provide an excellent movie file, they really stand by the idea that transcoding is inherently bad. Now, before I get too far into this video, if you don't know what transcoding is, I actually made a video three years ago that explains the three different methods of streaming content from your Plex media server. That's direct play, direct stream, and transcoding. I will link in the description down below and at the end of this video if you want to watch more on those three individual types of streamings that you can get from Plex. Three individual types of streamings. Yes, I just said that, and I'm not gonna cut it out. But in today's video, I wanna focus more on the differences between a transcoding and a direct play. So direct play is exactly what it sounds. You're just, you're taking a file from your media server, you're pulling it over to your client, and you are directly playing that video file on your client. There is absolutely no video processing being done on the back end in order to play that video file. It's just grabbing a file, pulling it down, that's it. It's like the old west of DLNA service, no transcoding, no processing, just raw dogging it up. Or you have the more relevant, useful, and versatile method, transcoding. Transcoding actually processes and changes the video before it gets to your client, making it playable for whatever reason, which I will cover soon. A common question that I've actually seen presented in random Plex videos, especially Plex videos that I present where I'm testing transcoding capabilities of different devices, is why would you want to ever transcode a video? Like, why build a server? Why even worry about how much this NAS can transcode your video files? Why would you even transcode it when you can direct play? And from one perspective, I 100% agree. If you have your Plex Media server in your home and you are using clients within the same intranet on your own network and you are transcoding video files to different clients within your house, then you probably need to figure out why and change that. I'm not saying you have to, but you could be missing out on an experience that you otherwise should be enjoying. Like let's say, for example, surround sound. And on top of that, there's legit reasons why you wouldn't wanna build a server capable of doing a bunch of transcoding. Like for example, cost. Do you wanna build a server that's gonna be able to handle multiple transcoding sessions at the same time? It's probably gonna cost you a little bit of money. Power usage could be another big deal. If this server is big, it's beefy, and it's able to handle a lot of things, it's probably gonna take a lot of power to do it. And then of course there's size. Sometimes size does matter, and you can't exactly have a full-on server rack sitting in a server room just serving media files. Sometimes people want something smaller. Sticking true to the old statement that it's not the size of your media server that matters, it's what you do with it. In fact, there are some network attached storage devices or NASs that just don't have the ability to transcode at all. Those are usually the very budget-friendly NASs that can't really do much. So it will technically serve your files, but it has no processing power to actually, you know, process that video file. So with all that said, on some level, I kind of sort of understand why somebody would say, why would you ever want transcoding? But transcoding has its advantages and has really become the core of what makes Plex so versatile and so popular. And there's really two main reasons why the Plex Universal Transcoder is gonna automatically kick in to process those video files when either you, your friend, or your family members are watching videos. And the first one is bandwidth. I know some people have some metric gigabit internet out there. And for those of you who 
have symmetric gigabit internet, I just want you to know that I hate you and you should close out this video and forget that I ever exist because I don't wanna know about your amazing internet because I'm totally jelly. But if you don't have symmetrical gigabit internet and you suffer like me and you have slow internet upload speed, you kind of realize that that internet upload speed is precious and you just can't afford to serve, let's say 20 megabit per second video files. So as an example, let's say I have a Back to the Future movie and that Back to the Future movie is 20 megabits per second. My current internet upload speed is 35 megabits per second. So if one person wanted to direct stream that movie, they would take out 20 megabits per second of my upload speed just like that. And of course, if a second person logged in and tried to direct stream, well, 20 plus 20 is 40, and I only have 35. So we're going to have an issue. The Plex Universal Transcoder, however, will take that down to whatever megabit per second you can handle, which is amazing. So with my 35 megabit per second upload speed, I couldn't even serve two people with direct play for a single 20 megabit per second movie file. But if the Plex Transcoder kicked in and converted those to two megabits per second, all of a sudden I can do like 16 or 17, maybe more. Making much better use of the bandwidth available at my house and very possible, if not very probable, reducing the amount of stress of me trying to utilize my own internet and people are trying to consume it. So it's a very good thing. And the second reason why the Plex Universal Transcoder will automatically kick in for you is compatibility. Now, if you're running something like the NVIDIA Shield that can handle all different types of codecs, containers, and resolution, then hey, that's great. If it's on your local internet, it's probably direct playing everything and you are good to go. But let's say one of your friends is running an Xbox One at a remote location and it can't handle a certain file type. Plex will automatically kick in, make that file compatible so they can watch it. Now with compatibility, you're gonna have a few different things here. Things like your codec, which is like H.265, H.264, VC9, VP8, etc. Of course, a codec is what's used to encode and decode the video file itself. And that's all gonna be wrapped in a container. That's gonna be things like MKV or MP4. Now you can't have a codec like H.264 being used with two different types of containers. But some clients can handle different containers, some clients can handle different codecs. And while we're adding to this list, some clients can handle different resolutions. You might have a 1080p TV and you're trying to play a 4K media file. This obviously might not work. Now, if this all sounds maybe a little bit confusing, it's okay. That's where the Plex Universal Transcoder steps in. Plex automatically communicates with the clients, finds out what it can handle and transcode those video files or changes the video files on the fly automatically for you and each one of your clients that are using your server. It's kind of a beautiful little song and dance between client and server where they negotiate what they can handle and then they just do it. Of course, Plex will need horsepower to do transcoding. And by horsepower, I mean a CPU and or a GPU. Back in the olden days, you could only do CPU transcoding, but now we have GPU transcoding, which is like really, really just unlocked the potential of your media server by adding a video card. Now, some people may think that you need a lot of RAM to run a Plex media server, but in reality, you don't. However, it is nice to have enough RAM to use your RAM as a transcoding directory rather than something like your operating system SSD or a spare hard drive. I'm not gonna dive deeper into the whole RAM transcoding thing. Again, links in the description, but that is a thing. So if you wanna build for it, you can. But pretty much when you're taking a large, let's say 20 megabit per second file and you're transcoding it to a two megabit per second file, well, you have to store that file somewhere. That could be in your RAM, could be on your SSD, or it could be on a regular hard drive. Either way, it has to sit somewhere temporarily. So in conclusion, transcoding is not a bad thing. Yes, they might be getting a lower resolution file or a lower quality file by transcoding from your Plex Media server. And yes, you might have to build a server to suit your needs, but Honestly, from my standpoint, that's kind of the fun of it. It's fun to build a server that can handle 20 streams at the same time, but then really only use four because reasons. But for me, the best part is, is my bandwidth is not being completely utilized by friends or family members watching my media files. So guys, if you have any questions or comments on this topic, post them down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this subject. I know a lot of people say, you should never do transcoding. Why would you ever worry about building a server that transcodes all the things when you can just direct play all the stuff? And while I see where you're coming from, I wholeheartedly disagree. Let me know down below how wrong I am. Well guys, thank you for watching, like and subscribe below and have yourself a good day.